Hello collectors and welcome to my review of the SH Monster Arts Batra. This dark moth is the first SH Monster Arts web exclusive of 2014 and Mothra is soon to follow. Let's examine Batra wingtip to wingtip to see whether or not it should be a part of your collection. Sculpted by Yuji Sakai, collectors need not worry at all about the quality of detailing on Batra. This dude's spiky in all the right places, and some interesting plastic choices were made in some spots. To begin with, the head of Batra is made out of a translucent plastic, as you can see here. Pretty neat, huh? Also, it's rather soft plastic. You can bend it a little bit. It does have some give to it. The back end of good old Batra here is also made out of that translucent plastic. As you can see here a little bit, ooh, gotta be careful, that stand. And also, the very end, little pincers here, are made out of that same soft plastic as the head. Has some gift to it. The sculpt detailing on Batra's back looks pretty wicked, as you can see. The underside of Batra looks pretty sweet, too. Here's a head-on view of Batra. And one from Butler's rear. The legs have some great detailing to them. They're pretty spiky. You can see right here at the top. They also have these little barb-like things coming off of them. And all of the hands of Batra have these small little bumps and grooves on them. They're pretty solid. And even the fingers look nice too. The wings are made of a hard plastic, much like King Ghidorah's. And the little spikes here, eh, they're pretty sharp. Be careful not to cut yourself on them. The sculpt is beautiful on this figure, and the paint job is equally as amazing. On the body, at least. The main body of Batra features the amazing part of the paint, with red-yellow brushing to bring out all of the small bumps as you can see here on Batra's back, and even here on the abdomen. The underside of the abdomen features a nice, very light yellow dry brushing. It's a very nice touch. The face spikes and mouth have a nice creamish paint to them that blends in really well with the black plastic. Also, the red eyes also bring out the compound eye effect that looks absolutely amazing in person. Here's a quick shot of the end of the abdomen here. And here's a quick shot of the legs. Amazing paintwork on the main body of Batra. Now, the wings kind of suck. The red looks nice, but the yellow is horrible. You can see little bubbles right here around the edges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it looks just sloppy with splotches looking like, you know, it's missing. Like the paint job wasn't entirely completed. And even in some areas, as you can see, there seems to be an, a change in the intensity of the amount of yellow paint that's used. It doesn't look very right at all. And also on some spots, as you can see right here, if it'll focus in, there we go. It looks kind of clumpy. What the hell, Tamashi Nations? What are you doing? This is not what I expect from a Monster Arts. Come on. Overall, as you can see here, the wings look pretty cheap. Yeah, not a big fan. At least the yellow spikes look nice. Except there's some paint missing on mine. Gee, I don't know. Overall, in the looks department, Batra is pretty damn fine. The only real issue, as I kind of really brought to the forefront there, are the wings, which look like ass. But aside from that, there are some very fine detailings on the body, which a lot of collectors will definitely appreciate. Batra's articulation is about what you would expect from this design. It's very simple but it's enough to make him expressive. Both portions of the wings are attached to the body on a hinge with this little base area here. So when you move the large portion of the wing, both should move, but the smaller wing is attached to the base independently on a hinge joint, so you can move that on its own. So you can move them apart or move them together. So if you move the big portion of the wing, both should move. And also, the hinge joint is pretty strong. You don't really have to worry about snapping that like you would with, say, King Ghidorah. 
Next up for Batra, the mouth. The two pieces here are attached on ball joints. So you can put them together like so, or stretch them apart, and you can have them most certainly off center. Batra's head and neck are attached to the body on ball joints, so you can get some pretty decent movement out of them. Here you can get them to look up, and you can get them to look down. The abdomen of Batra, on mine, it's pretty finicky. There are many ball joints inside of it, so you can move it around, including here at the base, but it's very tight and difficult to move. I just like to pop it off and move it around and wiggle it as such. So you can see it moving from different angles. Yeah. Mothra's looks like it'll be much better than this. And finally, the last portion of the articulation section for Batra, the legs. As you can see here, right at the base of the body, they are attached on a little teeny tiny ball joint. There's really not much movement there, but as you can see right here, where my finger is, there is a ball joint there which allows for movement. And then right here, at the bend, the knee, the elbow, whatever you want to call it, there's a ball joint which allows the arms to fold in and out. But interestingly enough, that's about as far as they move. However, if you use the swivel motion of the ball joint, you can get the legs to move out. And the hands are also attached on a ball joint with very limited movement. Do be careful because many, many, many collectors are reporting that the legs of Batra, right here, on the inside, like to pop off like that to reveal the very, very tiny ball joint. And this little ring here on the end of the leg of Batra, I'll focus in there so you can see, maybe, yes, this little ring here likes to pop off and people have been losing them, many of them. So keep your eye on that. And if the legs do fall off, popping them back on is an irritating process. Yeah. And what makes it such an aggravating process is that the tiny, tiny ball joint likes to move in towards the body, and you kind of have to get a small item to move the ball joint away from the body so this way you can pop the leg back on, and then once you don't get it on, you got to fiddle with it again, and then again, again, yeah. It can be a bit of a pain. Luckily on mine, they don't pop out unless I forcibly move them, so maybe you'll get lucky too. Overall, when it's all said and done in the articulation department, Batra... There's no real suggestion for more articulation, just wish the legs were a little bit better. What all comes with Batra? Well, you're kind of looking at it. This base, this arm, and a small, kind of pointless cradle that he comes with. Here's a solid look at the base. It says, Batra. Yay. And there he is, battling Mothra. There's the back of it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Cool. Here's a look at the Stage Act 4 arm that you've probably seen plenty of if you've been collecting the Monster Arts line. And here's a little cradle that he comes with. And what you do is you take your butler, right here, and you slide it in. Like so. And then you plug the arm into the hole. Like so. And then you line up the arm with the base. Like so. Spin him around so this way he doesn't look too dumb. And there we go. You have yourself a flying Batra. Now here's the Mm, unfortunate part. That's about all you can do with the cradle. Because if you move the top portion where you s the cradle sits, he'll slide off. And really, with just a slight touch or something, yeah, you can see him wiggling around there more so than you normally think that he would. So, ooh, if something knocks the stand that Batra is sitting on, like say the shelf, it might topple over. In the accessories department, 
No beams? Really? We get this little janky cradle? <sighs> Could be better. Sure, Batra has a very, very wide wingspan, but exactly how much shelf space is it going to take up? Here is Batra alongside some choice Ultra Act releases. As to be expected from an SH Monster Arts, Batra is much larger than the Rebel Tech releases. Here is Batra alongside some of the Kaiju from Pacific Rim. Next up, two choice Jaeger from the movie, Pacific Rim. Here is Batra alongside some fellow Monster Arts releases. And finally, a size comparison I know some will need. Batra next to the Rebel Tech Mothra. As you can see, Batra definitely does have a very large, intimidating wingspan, but the body is relatively small, about the size of the SH Monster Arts Godzilla Jr. If you think you have enough shelf space, you may just want to widen that space a little bit more. Other than that, I would say that Batra is just about as large as you think it is. So, buy Batra now, skip it entirely, or wait for a sale. Batra is a unique design that's sculpted very well with translucent plastic in some parts with a nice, sturdy wing connection. However, the paint on the wings looks awful. The articulation should meet the needs of any collector, and no improvements could be named specifically aside from maybe more fluid movement from the abdomen and a stronger connection at the legs. The accessories that come with Batra, they fit the kaiju pretty well, though the cheap, shaky cradle and the lack of beam accessories really make me think that this was just thrown together at the last minute, and not too much effort was put into it. When it's all said and done, fans of Batra will definitely love this figure, though those looking to just get a nice Batra in the scale of the rest of the SH Monster Arts line will pretty much be more than content with this. Batra is not a bad figure, but definitely there could be some improvements to it.